The new entry-level iPad, also known as the 10th gen iPad, at first looked like a dream, but as I and many others got our hands on them, it didn't quite live up to the potential. And it did something that Apple rarely does with its products. It cut corners. So six months later, with more hours logged in on this thing, has my opinion changed? Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. So the good news here, this was and is a really good iPad. What I questioned in my review was whether it was worth the price. And generally my thoughts on that haven't really changed. If you make a lot of video calls on your iPad and don't like the camera off to the side, then yes, this iPad, totally worth it. And if you're an illustrator like me though, I'm not so sure. What this comes down to is you can still get last year's iPad, which is cheaper, for a little bit less, and you can get the iPad Air for a little bit more. And the iPad Air gives you some of the really nice features that are missing here. And so that leaves this iPad landing in this no man's land of not really giving me enough reasons to recommend it over last year's cheaper ninth gen iPad. So let's start with that screen. This is not a laminated display. That's something you find on the iPad Air. That's something that a lot of people were hoping you would find here. But what does that mean? Lamination, it seals the screen to the glass above it. On this tablet, there's a little bit of an air gap between those two things, and you can see it when you tilt your tablet to the side. It's also noticeable when you're using the Apple Pencil. It makes this tapping sound. So drawing on it is much louder, because you hear that tapping, you hear that pencil clicking. But how big of a deal is is this for me personally it's it's not huge because I work by myself. I would imagine if you're in a schoolroom full of children or if you're in a study hall where being quiet is a good thing, you'd probably notice it a little more. But it doesn't affect your ability to draw on this iPad at all. But it also doesn't look nearly as good as a laminated display. This might also account for the increase in thickness of this iPad compared to like the similarly sized iPad Air. This one's just a touch thicker, but that's probably also why it can't be used with the Magic Keyboard accessory or some of the other accessories that Apple has made for it. And that led to another compromise here. Instead of being able to work with that Magic Keyboard, Apple ended up making uh, what I would consider an inferior keyboard product. It's not horrible. It's just that the Magic Keyboard is so good and it's only like a little bit more in price that it feels like a real compromise creating something that you know isn't as good just so it fits this iPad that's a little bit thicker. One of the things that came up in my original video and the comments quite a bit is a lot of people saying, oh, I can't believe Apple cheaped out on this, but I think there is a really good reason why they designed this iPad this way. Dave2D raised a great point in his video. These entry level iPads are used a lot in education and being able to easily fix a broken screen is a big deal to that market. When you have a laminated screen and that screen breaks or cracks, you have to replace the entire thing, the glass on top, the screen that's bonded below it, all of it, very expensive. If this screen cracks, you only have to replace the glass on top. That's easier and it's cheaper. And Apple is walking the line between what the education consumer needs and what the average consumer wants. And I definitely follow into the category of the average consumer. Okay, maybe I'm not average, but I think most people would like that laminated screen. Did you notice the drawing that I'm using in the background of this video? It's a sketch that I've included in my new intro to digital art course. My new intro to digital art course is designed to be that stepping stone into digital art. Each project in that course is designed to give you a quick win and build some of those fundamental skills so you can go back to those tougher courses and tutorials and kick some butt. So check out that link down below in the description to learn more and we're back to the video. All right, I want to talk about the Apple Pencil. This iPad switched from Apple's lightning connector for charging over to a USB type C connector along the bottom for charging. This is a good thing, but this is also where it gets a little weird. This only works with the original Apple Pencil. How do you charge the original Apple Pencil? You guessed it, it has a Thunderbolt connector. So in order to charge it with this iPad, you need a USB type C port and a little adapter in order to charge the pencil. And this, 
This is even more wonky than it used to be, especially when you look at the iPad Air, which just charges by magnetically attaching the second gen Apple Pencil to the side. This is another area where I've heard some people point to that education market again for this change or lack of change. A lot of schools already have Apple Pencils, so having to replace all of those pencils with second gen Apple Pencils is a big, big expense. And I can see that. Another reason might be the placement of the camera on this iPad. Like I said at the beginning, that's the major feature. If that's the thing you want, this is a really nice iPad. But that camera is centered along the top bezel of the iPad or the side, depending on how you like to hold your iPad. But that is where the charging mechanism of the iPad Air and the iPad Pros is located. That is where the pencil goes. So with the camera there, you might not be able to fit the magnetic charging mechanism in there as well. If you're wondering if there's any other benefit to the Apple Pencil 2 over the original, not really. As far as drawing goes, it's just as good. Under the hood, there's no major changes. It's just way more convenient to charge the latest pencil. Now, one area where I think this iPad is really, really good is in performance. We're talking about an A14 Bionic processor that also comes with four gigabytes of RAM. To put this in perspective, the main iPad Pro that I use, which is now, you know, what, four years old, has an A12 Bionic, which also has four gigabytes of RAM, and it still works really well for everything I need it to do. It's it's starting to show its age here and there, but for the most part, the processor holds up really, really well. So this iPad, which is significantly cheaper than that Pro I bought a few years ago, is going to still continue to hold up for years to come. Now, four gigabytes of RAM may scare off a lot of illustrators. It doesn't sound like a lot. If we're talking about a Mac or a PC a Windows computer, four gigabytes of RAM is horrible, but an iPad, it's solid. It, it gets the job done. The main area where you're gonna notice it is in programs like Procreate, where Procreate limits how many layers you can have based on how much RAM you can have. And if you're going just by the size of the screen, you're still gonna get, I don't know how many layers, but it's close to 100 with four gigabytes of RAM. You're still gonna get a lot of layers. If you plan on animating in Procreate on this iPad, that might be an area where you might want to stay away from the lowest end and go for something a little bit better with more RAM, more layers equals more animation time. But in general, I feel like the performance is really good for the price that you're paying. At the same time, it goes back to that value question. You got an A13 and last year's ninth gen iPad. That A13 Bionic is still holding up really well and you're going to save some money. I think this redesign looks better, but that's really just an aesthetic change. So there is a price increase without a lot of benefits. And that was really where the wishy-washiness came in for me. If it turns out that they made or didn't make many of these changes because of the education market, I totally understand that. And it makes it a lot easier to look at a product like this and say, it's just not for me. And, and that makes a lot of sense. But when you look at this next to that ninth gen iPad, which still runs really well, it still performs really well, that ninth gen iPad is looking really old. So even six or seven months later now, this iPad still falls into the same no man's land of being a little bit more expensive, without a lot to show for it. And you could spend more and get a really, really nice iPad Air or spend less and get pretty much the same thing that's slightly more convenient to charge. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.